Okay. Hello, class. How are we doing? This is Professor Carey. Um, this is going to be Chapter 18. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying your snow day. Um, so we do have to kind of keep chugging along since the last couple of weeks. So uh, the last Chapter 18 we're going to do online, and you can follow along. I've cut back uh, some of the slides and some of the material to really simplify it just in the interest of time. Okay, so uh, chapter 18, Manufacturing and Operations. What we're gonna be looking at is kinds of productivity, the importance of quality management, service business management, manufacturing and um, operations, and inventory levels, which is an pretty much a, a very strong, very important ingredient of the whole ops management field. So, real simply, operations management, the big picture looks at inputs and outputs. Generally, they, this, it's studied within the manufacturing industry. You can look at a service industry, accounting, law firms, uh, real estate, etc. but it's, it's easier and more tangible to look at a manufacturing company that produces a physical product. Okay, so basically we're looking at the inputs that go in to the company and then what's coming out on the other end. So the field is trying to measure those inputs and outputs. Uh, they are trying to see what's the most efficient way to have all those inputs uh, play, put to work and what it's producing and how efficient that is that is occurring and thirdly how long is it taking what's the the time element okay so the inputs and outputs the measuring of those the efficiency and the timing this is probably the largest part of this chapter and ops management again it's only a very basic introduction you guys will have an entire course on this, but <clears throat> essentially it looks at what they call productivity. It's, it's a ratio, outputs to inputs, and that can be anything, but it looks at all the inputs with all the outputs from a company, everything that's going in. And so you may get a number 2.0, 3.0 as a ratio, and until you really look into it more closely, it may not mean a whole lot. <clears throat> so one, to get meaning to that, is partial productivity. So we want to look at all the outputs and look at a single input. So for example, we might be making t-shirts. Okay, so the company makes t-shirts and we want to know the wages that are incurred, that, that are used to make all the t-shirts. So if we're able to make 10 t-shirts within you know, one hour and the wages are five bucks that in total, that's, that unit is two dollars. So um, two units per one dollar. And that would be a partial productivity, okay? So we created 10 t-shirts it required five bucks, so that's a two to one ratio, okay? So that's partial productivity. When you look at multi-factor productivity, that's everything that's involved. And if you look here on the, on the slideshow, it's the labor, people working, the capital, the, the capital, the money put into uh, the business, um, purchasing the items, the materials, the energy, the electricity, what what is required within the warehouse, if you will. So wages, other capital, materials, and energy, that is everything. And so if we want to look at the full output, the t-shirts, okay, this company has produced X number of t-shirts, but it requires labor, capital, materials, energy, all of that together. What you need to remember is you need to put all those in the same unit, so dollars. So 
th then you can make a reasonable um, ratio. You can have X number of t-shirts per X number of dollars because labor, capital, materials, energy, they might be in different, uh, maybe in different unit measurement, but you want to put them all in the same so that you're able to say, I produce all these outputs with these number of dollars, okay? So productivity is simply outputs over inputs. Partial is, so the example here, I said wages. You could also say, I produced X number of outputs with X number of workers, okay? Total is the output with everything that goes into that output, okay? And again, the important thing is to keep all those multi-factor, all those elements into one, the same unit, hence the dollar, that's the easiest. Now, when companies are operating, they can get certifications to let the public know how, uh, you know, how ethical, if you will, they are. And because we remember, we can, with that productivity, inputs and outputs, I can sometimes produce the same outputs with fewer inputs. Or I might want to add some additional inputs to to enhance, to increase the output. So that ratio can change quite a bit. You can change any output and any input. But the important thing to remember is if I'm increasing my output, you know, is it on an ethical, am I cutting corners? Um, am I not, am I not looking, I'm not keeping with the standards? Um, so this agency is set up to basically standardize some companies and manufacturing companies and they have a some terminology called ISO 9000, ISO 14000, ISO 27000. So if your company has that credential, that's going to mean something. And you guys probably have seen those figures somewhere. Um, so for example, if your company is certified ISO 9000, that means that as a certain quality to the products and the management team at that company, okay? And by the way, that, those credentials are, are universal. IS 14,000 is when you have minimized any harmful effects on the environment. So yes, you might be able to produce more, more outputs, but in the course of doing that, are you harming the environment? So, if you're able to do it while you're not harming the environment, that's that much better. So, that's the whole concept of ops management. Producing the outputs with the inputs, but within some guidelines. The other is ISO 27000, and that's how well you are managing your security and techniques for IT. Okay. Um, so those are the three you want to remember for the customizes make to order. Okay, it's a little bit closer, but not quite the same. Uh, the last is make to stock. So it's standardized par standardized parts um, assembled before the customer's order. So it's it's out of the box. It's it's ready to go. You buy it as is, and plug it in and go. Okay, so basically no customization. So those are the three types, different types of manufacturing operations that are studied in this field. Okay, and they, because of those, the processes can, can you know, can be altered and be changed quite a bit. This is something called the flexibility in the management field. So from lowest to highest. So if you think of a company that makes uh, pharmaceutical drugs, they put all the pills in a bottle, uh, put the stamp on it, and, and that's about it. So it's what they call continuous flow. It's, if you were to look at that, how that's working within the, the 
you know, the warehouse. It's just a it's just a product that's stamped out and processed and shipped out. Okay, they make one one item, and that's it. The other is a batch production, so they may make three different types. They may they may make a hundred boxes of product A, two hundred boxes of product B, three hundred of product C. Okay, they operate in those sort of batches. Um, and each of those, by the way, would, would create a different, there would be different inputs and outputs, different formula makeup within each of those batches. Okay. Third, the most complex is what we call a job shop. It's, you know, it's uh, very little, you know, small flexibility job orders. So it's highly flexible, meaning you place your order and so th there's a lot of flexibility in that in that product so it's very much unlike the continuous flow or the batch production okay so low flexibility high flexibility moving actually a little bit to the accounting world um, when you look at inventory and we've talked about this with the biz project biz cafe inventory sits on the balance sheet okay and it sits under the current asset section so it is it's the least liquid you have cash accounts receivable and inventory and this whole section of ops management is basically inventory and when you think of inventory you want to think of it in a couple different manners the raw material so the company buys all this just paint and now that paint's going to go on the, the car or the product or the service that they're making so the inventory is uh, recorded at its raw material cost um, then or you might have some parts that are that are purchased and then within the company those parts are assembled and produce the final product okay so you have the raw material you have the work in process piecing those products together with the individual parts or the raw materials and then you have the finished product which is ready to be shipped and out the door part of the accounting world and now ops world is determining what is the average inventory because that's going to be important you know how much do we have on hand for the customer order so companies want to know what is the the turnover I have all these products how many are going out the door and how many are still sitting in the warehouse so there are a couple of simple equations here the average aggregate inventory is if you start if I have you know 100 today and then I have 200 at the end, I've obviously purchased, I've sold some, I've used some in the production, I've purchased some new products, but now I have 200 at the end, 100 at the beginning. So they may take, use that as an average, okay? So it's 300 divided by two is 150. So that would be the average aggregate inventory. They also want to know the weeks of supply. So how many weeks, if I go in the warehouse of that company and I stop ordering, how long will it take to deplete the inventory? Okay, that's weeks of supply. How many weeks of stuff do I have back in the warehouse to get by before I have to reorder? Because companies don't want that sitting on the shelf any longer than they need um, because it's, it's expensive. They're not selling it. Um, there's their costs associated with having all that in the in the warehouse. Okay, so weeks of supply is is a terminology you want to know. And inventory turnover. So again, inventory turnover looks at how many times that inventory in the warehouse. Again, if you sort of can visualize the warehouse, and they have products in there. How many times is that sold, replenished by reordering? They sell it again, 
They order, sell it, order, sell it, etc. How many times is that happening? So we can use a simple formula by, we, in this slide 16, we sold 1,000 per year, we have 100 on hand, so we can just use that simple equation of 1,000 over 100. So that's telling me there it's turned over 10 times. Okay, that, that's, so that's a, so you really want that turnover to be as high as possible. Again, you don't want that sitting. So if, a simple example, if I sold a thousand and I had a thousand sitting on hand, well, that would be, turnover would be one. Sold a thousand, I bought a new thousand, then I sold another thousand by the end of the year. So it would be a slow turnover. So that number, you want that turnover to be as high as possible. <clears throat> okay, uh, sort of in the same lines of inventory. Again, stock out is something how long before we are out of supplies? Because what a company, two things, a company does not want to have too much inventory in the warehouse, but there's a huge cost of running out of that inventory. You guys have all ordered things online, I would imagine, and they may have said, well, you know, we'll get that order out, we're out right now. So they have to source their supplier to get the product and then to ship out to you. So that's a, that's a big, big cost to the company. It's lost sales, angry customers, or and you might go somewhere else and never go back to that company. So they want to know how long is it before they run out of their product. So on the other side of that continuum is if they have enough where they never run out, well, the problem with that is there's a huge cost to storing and keeping, maintaining that inventory. And this, I would like you guys to just understand these terms. So what is the cost of maintaining inventory? The ordering cost, you know, we've hired people to do that, customer service folks. Um, the setup cost, okay, holding cost. I mean, it, it, you know, we have to place it on the shelf, so to speak, and we have to go get it sell it, get it, sell it, pick it out. Um, so all that, you know, purchasing it, getting it on the shelf, maintaining it, holding it, you know, maybe keeping the, and depending on the product, you might have to keep that warehouse at a certain temperature, okay? That's a cost. So the point is that there's a fine line between Keeping the inventory coming in, not running out of not running out of materials, but not having too much where it's too costly. A field within that is inventory management, and there are three basic uh, categories: EOQ, JIT, and MRP. So economic order quantity, just in time, JIT, and materials requirement planning. So let's look at each of those. This, this is probably the, you know, the, the more complicated one. This is a very simple example, but economic order quantity, a company wants to know what, based on the demand of that product, how many people are purchasing, what's happening out in the economy, what it costs to hold that and order it and, and manage it. What's the ideal number of units, widgets, widgets is always that term we use. How many should I order? What's the ideal number? So I don't have too much sitting in the warehouse. I've maxed out my orders. I've fulfilled all the orders. So that's economic order quantity. And if you look here, it's square root of two times the demand times the ordering cost divided by the holding cost. Okay, so this, you would want to know what that all means. Okay. 
just in time, that's where the freight world comes in handy. Um, if you think of freight trucks, you know, you know, moving things around the country, um, freight in this world is called inventory in motion. So ideally, what companies want to do is order just in time. You know, they get the orders in the back door and they go out the front door, you know, fictitiously. Um, so, the, you know, just in time and, and some, you know, there's some businesses that will order, you can order, you know, till midnight, they can get that order, get it posted and shipped out the next day. So shortening that gap, you know, minimizing that gap between ordering and fulfilling those orders, okay? And so they can save on warehousing cost, um, you know, timing, time is money, and, but it takes a huge coordination of the suppliers that you deal with, the manufacturing company, and the, and the customers. So there is a, a coordination effort that has to take place. Uh, the last MRP, okay, that is basically looking, detailing from start to finish. Okay, it's a step-by-step -step process. Um, what's the production schedule? You know, how late is the warehouse open? Um, how many batches do we have? Do we just have one type or do we have three? Or do we custom make, custom order these? Um, what kind of inventory do I need for the finished product? Do I need four different kinds of raw materials? Do I need just two parts that go together? So it's taking all those variables, putting them together in a pretty detailed report and coming up with the flow chart of the whole manufacturing op op operations process. So basically, in conclusion, ops management looks at what, when, and how to order something. What's the most efficient use of these inputs? What's the most efficient use of the time, labor, capital, raw materials to produce that finished product? And if we can figure that out, that's going to increase the profit of that company, possibly lower the cost, and um, have a better standard of living for that company. You know, better standard of living, or uh, you know, if you want to look at the shareholder, <clears throat> the profits they're making. So it's all ops management is all about efficiency. So that's it. Thanks, guys. Please review this, and I will see you Thursday.